All right, welcome back. So you've got PicoStuff installed. Uh, good job. Uh, I think of this video as kind of a continuation of the last one, but I wanted to make the last one separate just in case the process changes. Uh, so what I want to do is I just want to give you an overview of PicoSoft. Uh, I think the best way to do this is just kind of walk through a, a very, very simple example. So PicoSoft is broken up into these four tabs. So there's Project, uh, Circuit Diagram, um, which it doesn't even want you to change off Project until you've picked something, right? Um, so Project is where you say what uh, PLC you're using. Uh, so the PLC that we're going to use it's just this very top one. Uh, if you want to read the entire number on it, then great. Um, but it's the very top one. We chose intentionally a very like classic um, PLC, uh, one that's been around for a long time. Um, and so it's a good introduction uh, to PLCs. As mentioned previously, there's more complex versions, uh, but this is going to help get you started uh, and, and be a really good introduction. So this is the PLC we're using. Uh, from here, we can go to the other tabs now. So we can go to a circuit diagram tab. This is where you're going to write your code. Once you've written your code, uh, you're going to use the simulator uh, to try to simulate it. Um, so you're going to use the simulator quite a bit to test your work. And then once you're actually like ready to go, um, you're going to connect to a, a real device. Uh, the real devices are just going to be in the lab, right? So in the lab, you're going to connect to a real device. The real device is already in an assembly line, so you're going to write the code that runs the little assembly line. So for demo purposes, I'm going to connect to this guy here, but you're just going to follow along when I get to that step. So let's start with the uh, circuit diagram. So we've got our PLC selected, um, and in the circuit diagram, we're just going to make kind of the world's simplest PLC program. Um, we're going to make a, an input, so I just did a drag on basic input, and I just dropped it right there on the, on the left. And then I'm going to drag basic output and put it over in column G. Looks like my screen should have been a little wider. There we go. Uh, the other thing that I want to change, just kind of starting off, is there's is there's a bunch of different display formats. Um, the one that comes by default, I kind of hate. Uh, this one I hate worse. Um, the third one is the one I'm used to seeing. Um, so I strongly recommend the third one. It's kind of the ANSI standard version. So definitely switch to that display format. So this is our code. Um, our code here is saying we have an input. Um, whatever that input is, make the output match. So if you press the button, turn the light on. If you let off the button, turn the light off. Very simple. Let's go use the simulation uh, to see if we can get this working. So quick, click on the simulation tab. Um, by the way, there are also notes if you get, uh, if you get behind. So there's a project tab, uh, a circuit diagram tab, and then here we're in the simulation tab. The simulation tab has a bunch of sections. Um, so the first section is to set what type of input it is. Um, I'm going to go over this in great gory detail, uh, but for this example, go ahead and switch all the inputs uh, to the second column. The second column means normally open momentary. Our PLC only has eight, so to be honest, these bottom four don't matter at all. Um, so, I mean, you could set them, sorry, bottom eight don't matter at all. So you could actually set them however you wanted. Um, typically, I set them as, as normally open momentaries, but if you wanted to, you could set them as gibberish uh, just for fun. Um, so now we've got um, a simulation of how the real world is um, in a very simple way. We've also got inputs uh, to where we can give this thing inputs. Uh, and then the other section I use is display. So if I want to display, you know, my cues, um, I can see them on the screen, but I can also display them down here. These three sections are the only three I ever use. Um, and to be honest, the IR function, I just set it up and then I close it. Um, the main one I use is, is actually sending the inputs. So what I want to do for this demo is I just want to hit play. So I start the simulation. Uh, and the way this works is if I click on I1, um, while I'm holding it down, uh, you can see that Q1 is also on. So pretty simple little circuit. Um, you can see it's on both uh, by the big red lines and then also with the green circle down here. So make sure you can actually get this basic simulation to work. Once your simulation worked well, uh, then the final thing you would do is you would go to the communication tab. So I'm going to plug my, uh, my PLC in here. 
It programs uh, via serial, uh, so it's got this little serial port connection, uh, which goes right onto this guy. Uh, these will already be connected for you in the lab. Because your computer does not have a serial port on it, uh, we're going to use a USB to serial adapter, uh, so it's going to create a virtual COM port on your computer. So I'm going to plug this in. All right, so I've got this guy connected now. Uh, I've got my serial port on here. Um, and the idea from here is you go to the communication tab. Um, I'm just going to walk through this because I don't think I've got, um, got drivers installed right because I'm using Windows 8. Don't even get me started. Um, what you should be able to do, though, is you should be able to select your COM port from the drop down, uh, which you can see mine's not working. All right, I couldn't handle that my example didn't work, so I switched computers uh, back to a Windows 7 device. Um, so if you're on a computer that actually works, what should happen is when you plug in the uh, serial port, uh, it will give you a uh, probably a USB to serial COM port. Here mine is 24, which is a pretty high number, uh, but that's all right. Uh, then I go back into PicoSoft. I know what my COM port number is. Uh, I can select it. Uh, I can say online. Um, it then will connect to the device. And then if I hit PC to device, um, here it was currently running something, so it says, do you want to stop it? I say, sure, that's fine. The important thing is this green bar. Uh, that's actually my program going over. And it says, do you want to restart it? And I'll say, yes. Um, there's a possibility if the device was not running, you won't get those messages. Um, and you'll actually have to hit the start or the run button yourself. All right, at that point, my program is running over on the device. Uh, I couldn't handle that it wasn't working before. That's all we've got for this time. Uh, next time, we're going to talk a lot more details about inputs. See you then. Bye.